Without faith, it is impossible to please God, Hebrew 11.6. I've had the privilege to get to know Borland family from Belize. Junior and Addy are people of true, unwavering faith. They are sharing with us the amazing story how God intervened in their lives and led them to establish a Christian radio station that grew to become the second largest radio in Belize. It's almost 20 years ago, into radio, doing radio. I never imagined I would ever do radio. Um, I'm just a truck driver, <laughs> and I'm and I'm still a truck driver. And ever since when I was young, I used to work for my father. He used to travel to the states, United States, and go to Texas. And from there, we would buy a truck, buy two trucks, and we would tow it and travel all the way from Texas to Mexico to Belize. And, and normally a good, safe trip would take one week. You know, no problems, everything working good. And, you know, in Mexico there is no Christian radio or nothing in English to listen mm -hmm. to, you know. So, I would always listen to sermons, to English programs while driving to Mexico. And on one of those trips, you know, the Lord just impressed me instead of just listening, why not just share it with someone else? When I would come home, I would go to a local radio station. I would buy time, two times for the week. I would pay for it. And I would just feel happy that at least, you know, I'm doing something, sharing the Word of God, you know, over radio. You know, but on, on one of these trips, coming through Mexico, you know, the, the Lord just impressed me and, you know, by talking to a friend, you know, he said, he said, Junior, um, instead of just buying time, why not have your own radio station? I never imagined or I never dreamed for something like that to ever be, you know, because if you know me, I'm a very quiet person. I find that very strange. You know, I find it very strange that the Lord will would impress me to do something like this that that is not a part of me. My ideas, my my vision just got enlarged. Mm -hmm. You know, and I said, Wow, you know, you know, it could it could happen, it could be it, it could come true. We would always go and visit a family in Texas. A dear old couple. But when the idea for the radio came about, I don't know what happened to me, but I began speaking. I began sharing with them my dreams and what I want to do. One time when I visit them, you know, they they gave me an envelope. And I checked and I saw that there was money inside, you know. And I never yet hold so much American hundred dollars in my life. <laughs> it was it was five thousand dollars US. I'm like, oh man. And that was my first experience, one of my first miracles to know that God is in control of this. The programs we would play on the local radio station, I tried to take that same program to other radio stations around Belize, and nobody wanted to play. I even went to this radio station, and the guy knew me very well. And, you know, he said, um, you're going to be preaching about the Sabbath. And, we can't hear it, you know. So I got a lot of rejection. Looking back, I believe God had it for 
a purpose. So I had to overcome and endure these challenges. And that was what made me had the more desire, you know, to build your own radio station. It was always my desire to, to work on radio. And, um, you know, I tried so many other things and I guess the Lord brought me right back to where, um, where it should be. Yes, I have program for children. Well, I work all, all through the day. In the morning, it's uh, mostly Spanish. Right. And then in the evening, we switch to English. We do local uh, transmissions from here in, in our country. And of course, whatever live program is taking place. Uh, for example, we use a lot of um, Trebian, um, Hope Channel. You know, whatever live programs they have, we are able to transmit them live as yeah, well. Yeah. So that's, that's a huge that's help nice. as well for the radio. So we lived there for a whole year when we got married. Um, you know, as he mentioned, going to the States and coming back, it took him a span of a year uh, to be able to um, gather everything that he needed. In that time, we did not have any electricity. So we issued invitations for the opening of the radio station, and still we did not have electricity. Uh, the months were passing by and, you know, we were like, no electricity. It was, I think, like a month before we were still wondering, should we just uh, notify that, you know, maybe we won't do it. We still went ahead and continue with the plan. We got the electricity um, the Friday, right? The Friday we were having electricity for the grand opening on Sabbath. Sabbath. So the upstairs, you know, was where the radio is. And so we had electricity for that. But in my home, I still did not have until about two weeks after, you know. I see. Yeah, because they did that. And it was amazing, you know, it was something that really, again, um, made us know that we were not alone, that it was something that the Lord really wanted to happen. And everything else has just fallen into place in, I could say, almost the very same way. Yeah, and now you have uh, eight transmitters. Eight transmitters. Mm -hmm. And the major one is... In the mountain. Completely off-grid, there's nothing there, there's no power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They uh, uh, run on solar panels. And these are generators at night. Right. right. Because you cannot stop. <laughs> this is going 24 hours, <laughs> right? 24 hours, 24 hours yeah. non-stop. Right. Non-stop, commercial free. And commercial free. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not getting any money. No. It's you just... All Christian. Here we have um, anniversary programs in the month of um, January. We usually try to do it the first week, the first weekend. And um, it's an open invitation to all who listen and who wants to come to Faith right. FM. You know, uh, it's a day when we spend the whole day together. We prepare lunch for everybody. You know, so we feed everyone that is there for that Sabbath. And um, we usually have um, guest speakers as well. We have had uh, speakers like Pastor Doug Bachelor, uh, Pastor John Lamakin, uh, Randy Skeet, um, Pastor Dwayne Lemon, Pastor David Gates. I mean, it's been 19 years, you know, of, of um, doing, doing this program. I could remember a testimony when Pastor Doug Bachelor came. Um, this lady that listened to the radio, I had never met her before. You know, she's like, hi, ah, you know, I'm so excited to be here. And she said, I've been listening to Faith FM for a long time. She lives out in a farm, so she's far away from church. But she says, I really enjoy that church comes to my home. You know, because we usually would share the um, Sabbath school uh, central hour. And right immediately after that, there's a sermon. You know, so it's like, just like you're going to church. One time, you know, after listening to the radio, she came out and she told her husband she was going to the market. But instead of going to the market, she went to church and she got baptized. You know, she would always come in for prayer and she would say, um, you know, I, I don't feel bad that I don't come to church because I keep the Sabbath here at home and I have my radio on and I can listen to all that happens. You know, I must say, Andre, that even this anniversary, 
is a story by itself because mm -hmm. we had fear when we just started yes. that nobody would come. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we did our first anniversary, it was only like 15 people at the most, you know, just family and, you know, and the next year it grew and the next year and now it's like we don't ask ourselves that question anymore. And it's been such an amazing time because sometimes during January it's cold here in Belize and um, it's rainy and we had had some anniversary uh, celebrations where it's been raining all day long that we've thought mm -hmm. men I don't know who's going to show up for this program but people have still come and it's just been such an amazing experience one thing I learned from doing radio is that the way how God operates mm -hmm. you know he have his own plans or when you feel like you are not the right person or you might think you don't have the talent or the gift but God sees something special in you that you might be you could be the correct person to do the work for him and that's how it has been for the past 18 19 years you know that you know many people have come and asked you know do you how do you do this how do you put up that big tower? How do you do all of that? Yeah, I mean, we don't pay anybody, you know. But from the first time they put up the first one, somehow the Lord gave me the gift and the ability to learn. And after that first one, we never pay nobody again. You know, all the other sites where the tower and the transmitter are, it's me and my brother. And you know, friends they come and help and we put it up. So it's amazing <coughs> what the Lord can do through someone that is willing. You know, when you feel like you can't do it, it's amazing that God will help you and give you the, the strength and the you know the, the courage and the vision to get it done. And that's how it has been all these years. You know, it's just amazing. By faith Abraham obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he was going. Hebrew 11.8 You can be a part of this radio that brought blessings to so many in Belize by making a donation through GoFundMe.com. Donations are tax deductible in USA. 100% of your dollars will be spent on upgrading equipment, purchase of extra solar panels and batteries. Our great hope is that we can bring the message of Christ across the borders of Belize to neighboring countries. May God bless you.